Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is of course only me again and welcome to another metal detecting related video. So you've probably clicked on this video because you want to know how you can maximize your finds rate when you go out metal detecting. I can imagine pretty much everybody is gonna to wanna to maximize their finds rate. Um, I think personally, you need to have the utmost confidence in your machine in order for you to be able to go out and detect and be in the right mindset that you wanna carry on all day and really see what's in the field and what you can get out of it. Well, don't worry because in this video, I am gonna show you the number one tip, the number one thing that you can do when you go out metal detecting that can really increase your finds rate and I'm guaranteeing you that it's gonna work if you start doing it. So definitely check this video out, stay tuned for that one. And that just leaves me to say, thank you all so much for watching my videos as always. Really, really do appreciate it. Please keep commenting down below and of course subscribe if you like the channel and you like the content. And if you like this video and you found it helpful, do drop me a thumbs up as well, that means a lot. But let's get into the video and I will show you how you can increase your finds rate when you go out metal detecting. Okay, so what do I mean by increasing your finds rate? Well, that is quite an open question, I'll give you that. However, what I mean is, is when you go onto one of your permissions, are you gonna be making sure that you pick up absolutely everything that your coil goes over? Now, there are a number of ways that you can increase your finds rate. For one, you could obviously go out and do lots of research with old maps and make sure that you're in a really historical area where things have happened. But I will tell you this, you know, that is not guaranteed. I have been metal detecting for some time now and I've gone to some places where there has been, you know, battles and um, lots of different uh, historical things have happened in those areas and I haven't found very much at all. And yet I've gone to other areas where nothing has ever happened ever and I've pulled stuff out of the ground. So there is no rhyme or reason to that, but of course, yes, you could go and do lots of research, look at LIDAR, look at old maps, those sorts of things, and just try and think, you know, where has stuff happened? And maybe if I go there, I might be able to find some really good things. However, this video is not about research. This video is about something that you can do with your metal detector in the field before you actually start metal detecting, which is gonna ensure that you find something as soon as you go over it with your coil. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna instow this mindset in your head that uh, if you go over something with your coil and if there's something in the ground, you're gonna find it. And that is gonna be a very powerful tool indeed, okay? You need to have that mindset, you need to be positive and you need to think to yourself, if I'm going metal detecting, I'm gonna make the absolute most of my time and everything that my coil goes over on the ground, I'm gonna make sure that I know if there is something decent in there, I've got a really good chance of finding it. So it's nothing to do with settings on your machine or anything like that. And I can guarantee you that um, loads of people will not be doing this. In fact, I can probably name a handful of people that are doing this right now. Does it work for them? Absolutely, yeah, it really, really does. It works for me. I try and do it every single time I go into a field. So uh, let's get into it. Let's get you finding some more stuff and I'll show you the one thing you need to do in order to be able to find more things when you go out metal detecting. Okay, so there are gonna be a couple of little things that you're gonna need in order to be able to do this. So make sure you take them with you when you get into the field and go out metal detecting. Of course, one of the things is your metal detector, not gonna get very far with that. Uh, you need your spade or your shovel, but the most important thing to do this is a coin. Now, this here is a hammered penny from about Edward I, and it's been sort of sealed inside of this coin capsule. Now, this is a silver penny and it's quite small, but this is what we're gonna be using to do our trick or test today. 
So why have I bought a silver medieval penny? Well, these things are generally what people go out looking for. People are always pleased if they find them and one little coin like this can make a whole day's detecting. But they're also quite difficult to find because they are hammered coins. They're very, very thin, delicate pieces of precious metal. Some can be gold and some can be silver. You can also get some copper ones as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this delicate little medieval coin and we're just gonna bury it in the ground. And the idea is, is that we are gonna go over it with our metal detector and try and make sure that we adjust the settings on our detector to find this coin at the most optimal kind of value for this field. Now, that sounds easy in practice, okay? I can imagine everyone's probably going, well, I've done that before, it didn't make much difference, but trust me, this is going to revolutionize your detecting. And because of two reasons, the first one being, of course, that mindset, it's gonna give you the positivity that if you go over a little hammered coin that's quite far into the ground and your machine picked it up from every angle and every way around it went, then yep, you're gonna find it. But of course, it means that your system or your machine is running at the most optimal to find coins like this. And it's gonna, you know, you're gonna remember the little noise that that coin made and the numbers that came up on that coin. So um, it's gonna be a really good sort of starting point for you to go out detecting and find great things. So it's really, really worth doing. So bring a, a little coin along. You can put it into in a little bag or something. You don't need to put it into a little plastic coin case like this. I just do it because it sort of keeps it safe and uh, it means that when I dig it back out afterwards, I can find it quite easily because it's been a few times where I have lost the coin and had to really, really dig and get the pinpointer out and things like that. So try and make this easier for yourself. You're gonna wanna do this in every field that you go in. So yeah, just try and make things as smooth and as easy as possible. I carry this around with me and I usually keep it in my pocket. So as soon as I get into the field, I'll dig a little hole, stick this in, and then I'll try and wrinkle out the coin the best I can with the settings. And then I just go from there. So let's dig the hole now. Okay, so one thing you're definitely gonna want to do is just test the ground before you put something in there. Make sure there isn't anything sort of high conductive. Um, it's okay to have a little bit of mineralization or maybe even a little bit of iron because of course that will replicate normal ground conditions, but uh, definitely don't make sure that there is already a decent target in there. Um, and that means then of course that your target is gonna be the only one that stands out. So this little piece of ground here is quite clean. So let's, uh, let's dig a hole. Now, of course, today we are detecting in a pasture field. It doesn't look like this field has been ploughed for some time. So that, of course, means the ground is going to be quite nice and compact. Now, I wouldn't suggest digging a hole like you normally would if you were going to get a target out of the ground because you don't need to do that. What I do is I actually put the spade in one side and I literally push down on the ground so far that the whole of the spade has gone into the ground so that I know that it's a spade's sort of depth under the ground. And then I pull it a little bit to sort of create a bit of a chasm. And then I take the spade out, I get in there with the coin and I shove the coin into the side of the bottom of the sort of plug bit. Um, and then what I do is I literally just stamp it all back in so it's nice and compact again. And what that generally means is that you're not disturbing the ground too much. Um, and it's gonna give you a much sort of real life reflection of what the ground is like. Um, if it's mineralized, then it's mineralized, but it's normal ground. So this is far better than an air test because this is the field you're gonna be detecting in. You know, there could be anything in the ground. There could be rocky areas, lots of sort of, um, you know, ferrous items. It could be mineralized. So you've got to work with what you've got. And uh, remember, you're going in the field today to try and find all of the targets that are in this specific field. So definitely test a target in the field. And this is definitely the most optimal way of doing it so that you aren't disturbing the ground as much as, not, as what you would by digging out a hole plug, putting it in the bottom, and then sticking the plug back on. 
Okay, so now that we know the coin is in the ground, it's not been disturbed too much and we've squashed it all back down. Of course, you now need to get your machine on and uh, see what sort of settings that you can come up with using maybe some of your presets, maybe using some of the presets inside the machine itself and just see what you can do over this coin that will really make it ping out and stand out a lot better than what you maybe would have done if you'd have just not buried something in the ground and gone out detecting straight away. So. You're giving yourself a good head start by doing this and honestly it takes minutes you just get into the field dig a little trench stick a coin in the side run your machine over it and once you sort of hear that tiny tiny little coin ping through really nicely trust me when you set off in that field you're going to go i know if there's a coin under there i am going to find it straight away so i'm not going to film myself tweaking my machine i'm pretty sure you guys all know how to do that but uh, i'm just going to spend literally a minute or two now just running through some of the settings trying to get this coin to really jump out at me and that's pretty much it guys you go into a field you bury something that you want to find relatively deep my spade is easily about sort of nine to ten inches deep so you know make it hard for yourself don't bury something that you're easily going to find is the tip because of course anyone's going to be able to find that you want to bury things in there that you think are going to be really difficult for your machine to find and if you can find those really thin delicate difficult little targets in the field that you're detecting in all the other stuff's going to be an absolute breeze so definitely definitely worth doing this um, i'm just going to tweak it now and i'll let you know how i get on with it Okay, so I have now finished optimizing my machine's settings in order to be able to make sure that I find this coin eight to 10 inches below this undisturbed soil. Now this soil is as undisturbed as I can possibly get it. Of course, I have to put something in down under there, but I'm trying to do it the least sort of disturbing to the ground as possible. But it's in my coin pod and it's very easily just come out here and I can find it because one side of it is white as well. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much the trick, guys. You put something in the ground, put it nice and deep, bury something that's pretty hard to find and uh, go over it with your machine and optimize your machine so that you know as soon as you take a few steps in that direction when you're metal detecting you're going to find something this small this delicate in the field and trust me there aren't many people that are doing that um, if you guys do do that drop me a comment below because i would love to know if you do that every time you go into a field and also it's important to mention that there's no point in doing this every time you go into the same field. This is really only applicable if it's a brand new field that you've been in. Um, of course, you know, once you've optimised your machine, you can actually save it as a preset if you want to come back into this field and have those exact same settings. But likewise, you know, I'd like to think that if it was the same field that you've been into a few times, I think that you would know by coming back into the same field what settings you would need to put on your machine in order to be able to get those same optimal settings to find all of those lovely, tiny, delicate little things. So guys, definitely give this one a go. It is definitely worth doing. And I'm gonna go off and do some metal detecting now knowing that everything I go over I'm going to find tiny tiny little hammer coins quite deep under the ground can't say fairer than that there we have it that is my number one tip for anybody who is into metal detecting that wants to increase their finds rate now this is very dependent on the field that you're in of course you know some fields generally have nothing in although I am confident there's always going to be something in there even if it's just a modern coin or something like that um, but of course if you are going into a field it's your time you know you guys you know you could be doing a lot of other things with this time and I get that we all love metal detecting and that's pretty much what we would want to do every single day of the week but you want to be maximizing your time and making sure that if you go into a field you can walk out of that confident that a you've got everything in that field or b there wasn't anything in there to find okay so just by doing this one simple little trick you can do this with any machine any detector it takes no time at all get your coin stick it in a hole work on it with your machine just for a few minutes until it really pongs out 
take the coin and then you're off detecting. So I really hope this has helped a few people and hopefully guys, you know, some of you are gonna start implementing this when you go out metal detecting. Um, let me know what you think of the tip down below in the comments. I am just doing this to help you out. I have done this probably for about nine years of my 15 years detecting. Um, and I'm not saying that this is the reason I find all the things that I find, but I'm pretty confident that it gets me in the right mindset to know that if there's something there, I'm gonna find it. And that is a very powerful thing indeed. So thank you all very much for watching this video. Please comment and subscribe, of course, if you like it. And please give me a thumbs up as well if this has helped you out because that's what this video is all about. But until the next time, I will see you all on the very next hole.